this because as in the traditional roles of the slave masters and creating the what was called the tabulae, the custos rotolorum, the keeper of the roles of slaves, with the entry in those slave registers being the nomen, from which we get the name, and slaves identified to a owner, and the owner of the slaves that the or the groups of the slaves as familiar, the household name, the name of the household of slaves. This system is alive and well today in our language and in our statutes and in their system. We don't just want to expose that as we expose, as we mentioned, these other claims, but we also want to ensure that their claims are absolutely repudiated and a system ends any future claim of slavery, ends it forever. No one can claim your body. No one can claim to be the executor of your mind. And so we identify the concept of the live-born record. And what is the live-born record? It is the fact that when you choose to be born into the flesh vessel that you are in, a true trust is created, whereby your mind and the various levels of your mind, identified in cognitive law, is the general executor of the physical body for the benefit of your true person. And no one can claim your mind. And no one can claim your body. And so the true trust is to ensure that these statutes, these claims, these, these horrendously perverse concepts are ended forever. It may take some time, but it will be ended forever when people realize that every man and woman living and deceased has a right to a life-born record. Now, if they're deceased, we call it a death-born record, only because, of course, they're deceased and our ancestors, my mother and father, are deceased. And I want to ensure that there is an identification to show that no one can claim their remains. No one can claim their mind. But when you're alive, it is a live-born record and you can produce it once you've redeemed your trust number and you're registered your trust. You can redeem it from the site One Heaven. So in the context of a true trust, what is the res? What is the property that's placed into it? What's placed into it is the divine right of use from our divine trust. There is a symbiotic connection. We have divine right of use of our own body and our mind, and that is, is, is stated as categorically clear law in the covenant of one heaven. So whilst we are the beneficiary of the divine trust, we are the general executor of our true trust. And now we come to the more familiar territory of how we live on a day-to-day -day basis and how we interact on a day-to-day -day basis with the creation and administration of trusts. Now, trusts are created very easily. And in fact, the entire world is administered, ultimately, the entire financial world is trusts. I can create a trust as simply as handing the car keys to the car to a friend and saying you can borrow the car, yes, bring it back by X, Y, Z, and don't crash it. You know, we create the terms, the right of use, the arrangement, and off they go. Trusts are created simply as saying, we entrust. The speaking of the word entrust with the right intent, providing the right intent is there, is as simple as creating a trust. So trust can be created extremely simply, and, of course, can be done in a very formal way in their system. In those cases, we have, in our daily life, we have a relationship with a bank, which is a trust. We have a relationship with potentially a motor vehicle group. That's a trust. We have different um, commercial relationships. They're all trusts. And so there's a myriad of trusts. In the Eucadian system, we identify those as being superior trusts when they are created 
and conform to the rules and policies of the UK system. We call them superior trusts. The reason we call them superior trust is that we seek to codify and clarify their formation, the property, the res, the intent, the relationships, and the deeds, so there can be none of the trickery that we see in their system. There are no hidden trusts in Eucadia. You cannot have a hidden trust in Eucadia. As I hope you all realise, hidden trust, secret trust, is one of the big, big problems we face with the Roman system. So there are multiple superior trusts that are created in Eucadia. And our membership to the Globe Union, our membership to the Americas Union, and ultimately our membership to the local campus, we call the smallest community in Eucadia a campus, that then belongs to a province, that then belongs to a university. So even our membership to a campus is a superior trust relationship. And for each of those, because it is all out in the open, because it is all clear, when we enter a superior trust, we can't enter as the executor unless we... Uh, well, we can't, ultimately. When we enter a superior trust, we enter in the capacity as a trustee. We are agreeing to administer and obey the correct terms of that relationship. And that doesn't weaken us. That strengthens. It makes the commercial relationship fair. The executors of the campus are those that are elected by the members. And the members collectively, through their membership, are the trustees. And they, also, they also have different relationships, but ultimately, our superior trust, we are trustees. So we have three different roles in three different trusts. For our divine trust, we are our beneficiary. For our true trust, we are the general executor and we are the general executor of the estate, of the legal person in the Roman system. And for every superior trust we enter into in Eucadia, we are a trustee. Now, this material needs to be clear and I don't believe it is yet clear enough. This material needs certainly to have diagrams and I apologise, but the diagrams are not there yet. But as we clear the information and as we put diagrams, I hope the reason why each of those trusts were created, the reason we hold a different relationship in each of those types of trusts is also made clear. So that's Eucadia Trust. Okay, now, I would like to talk to you about the updates that we've been doing in light of the research on wills and, and testament and the update of the material that I did mention we would be doing in terms of moving remedy from the One Heaven site to the court sites. And I also want to talk to you about the updates of the ecclesiastical deed poll and the creation of the public record. So there's a few bits and pieces now to talk about this. But to make it easy for you, I ask if you can please go to the home page of one-heaven.org and when you get there, click on so you can actually see the home page. That's one-one-heaven.org. I'll let you get there and then I'll explain some of these updates. Now when you've logged in and you've refreshed that page, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the Remedies in terms of how to save your home, in terms of ecclesiastical deeds, and in terms of how to succeed in court have been taken off. Now, this material hasn't been lost. It's merely been changed and brought into the reformed law being the various court sites. Now, what I hope you all see, and I hope this is the case for everybody, is you'll see on that home page three new boxes in the middle there. In one box, you'll see the links to what we're listing as reformed law, and it will list the Globe Union Court, Africa's Union's Court, America's Union Court, Asian Union Court, Arabian Union Court. These are the court sites 
where ultimately, before the end of the year, we will be adjudicating our own legal cases. We will be seeking changes of venue and we will be adjudicating and resolving and recording legally through proper legal and due process all court matters brought against and by our members. And I'll get into that in a bit more, more detail now and of course we'll be covering this more in coming weeks. You'll also see two other boxes there. One that lists reformed societies where you'll see the Globe Union, African Union, America's Union and so on. And on that, when you click on those sites, you'll see that uh, you can go and look at the charter of the various unions and those charters have been updated. And you can see the work in progress in terms of the codes of law for those various societies. And then the third box is the reform banks. And the reform bank sites still need quite a bit of work. In fact, there's a substantial amount of work still to be done. But the foundation is there. The principles are there. And the bank sites are the reflection of a reformed system called the Supreme Financial System. And you'll see that the material on those sites will continue to be updated and corrected over the coming weeks. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to click on the Globe Union Court site just as the example in describing and, and explaining the updates of the material. So from the home page of One Heaven, you can go and click on the top link of Reform Law and click on Globe Union Court. Or, if you want to, you can go there directly by typing in the following, Globe, G-L-O-B-E, hyphen, Union, hyphen, Court, dot org. And you will also get to the same page. And when you get there, what you'll see is you'll see a link to the Charter of the Globe Union on the left-hand side. You'll see a list of the 22 books of canon law and the ones that we have made available so far with the other ones needing to be finished in the next two months. Then you'll see the list of codes of law. Now we'll be talking about all of this by the end of the call, so I'll come back to those by the end of the call. But underneath what you'll see is you'll see a number of links. One that says Roman Court Procedures. One that says Land Claim and Title Law. One that says Forms, or Systems of Law. And one that refers to the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll exclamation, explanation, I should say, Steps and Uses. Now, we will be adding to this, of course. And what we'll be adding as the next priority will be a link to wills and testament and probate law and Roman document procedures. And those links will be available not just on this site but on all the court sites by next week. Now, over time, I'll get back to public notice and public record before we wrap up here. But if you look at these sections, all the material that was on the home page of One Heaven has now been transposed to the court sites with additions added to them. So the section that said how to succeed at court has been split into two. The first being Roman court procedures. The second will be Roman document procedures. The section how to, to save your home has been updated and is now called land claim and title law. The material in terms of systems of law is new and if you click on that link you'll see the different types of law which we reflect in the positive law. And then if you click on ecclesiastical deed poll you'll see the material simplified in terms of uh, ecclesiastical deeds. Now I mentioned that we will be updating and talking about the updates to wills. So while I can't show this to you, I want to cover a couple of things 
about wills and testament and our progress and some of the key, key insights 